Somebody ought to shout amen. Let's bless them. Bless the music ministry today. Bless him. Randy, let's bless Randy this morning. Randy, thank you so much. God bless you. That's a good word. Let that be your, your word for this week. You're going to have a theme song for this week. Let Make that your theme song this week. We got to go back and get some of those oldies but goodies, right? My soul has been anchored. Is that Douglas Miller? My soul has been anchored. Friends, we need an anchor. Make sure that you're anchored. And make sure that your anchor holds in the midst of any seeming challenge circumstance or situation that you might find yourself in. You know, the spiritual meteorologist says there is a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, in the truth, then you'll surely drift away. So make sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Of truth this way. How are you anchored today? Are you anchored? Huh? Come on. Come on. Come on. Why don't you just give some things, put some praise in the atmosphere? I saw the word, the song ministered. It was ministering to me, as I know it's ministering to many of you sitting in here, if not all. So we give thanks today. Regardless to what storms might come, and in this world, it seems like we're often experiencing storms on a regular basis. Whether it's rainstorms, windstorms, firestorms, economic storms, political storms. It doesn't matter what storm may come and go. You know, storms come and go. And that's good news. Storms only, they come to go. They don't come to stay. But make sure that you can stay and anchor because you're anchored when they come your own, along your way. So thank you once again, Hillside Music Ministry and Keith, for blessing us today as you do every Sunday. And Anita. Oh, you know, that's my kind of carrying on, y'all. <laughs> Jesus will. <laughs> that's my kind of carrying on right there. So friends, here we are. We are on the first Sunday of this month of August, and we are invited to give attention to two what we call the, the eighth spiritual faculty of mind, divine will, which is also the eighth gate, say the eighth gate, to the city of God, which is the consciousness, the universal consciousness, the realm of the divine mind. It is the eighth gift of God, which is our ability to freely be in accord and on one accord with God, with spirit, with the divine, with the universe, with truth, and to see all things, say all things, all things, to see all things from beginning to end, past, present, future. Divine will. So as we move through this month, and before I get into the message, I want to invite us to reflect on three questions this month. You know, we make this rotation every year. Every year we, we travel and we visit and we work with the, the 12 gates of the mind, 12 gates of the soul, and each month of the year we do this. So I invite you to reflect on these few questions this month, and you may want to write them down, and those of you online or go back and see the survey, review the service. The first question is, what is the will of God for my life? Reflect on that question this, this month. The second, what is the will of God for my life? The second question is, am I living in alignment with the will of God for my life? That's the second question. First question, what is the will of God for my life? Second question is, am I living in alignment with 
the will of God for my life? And then the third question is, am I living in alignment with God's good, perfect, and exceptional will for my life? You know, there are three different levels and three different phases of this divine will. Am I living in alignment with God's good, God's perfect, and exceptional will for my life? So please make sure that you give some time and reflection on those three questions. And those are, these are not questions that require you to come and give me an answer. I don't necessarily want you to come and tell me what your answer is. I just invite you to get an answer and make sure that we are living accordingly. Our subject today, for the time that we have remaining, I want to speak from this subject, the remedy for every need. And to help us to convey the message, I want to share with you two things. Um, this message, in part, in part, is inspired by one of my favorite books. You know, we are reading people, we're thinking people here at, at Hillside. You all know that, right? Because we are expanding, we expand. You know, we've said before that most people have not read a book since high school or since college. And so they're living and existing on old knowledge, what we gained then. But you know, Scripture says, in my father's house or what? There are many realms and many dimensions of learning, of growing, of expanding, of knowing. But if we only stay on the first level, we'll never know what... What's in the ultimate, in the all of the other levels, right? At all of the other levels. So we are a thinking, reading people here. And when we encourage you to go and get books, it's to help us, you know, and not just get books, write your books. Some of you, you're, we're carrying information, a wealth of information. Somebody came up, told, told me during the service, what did you tell me uh, when we were meeting and greeting? I said, there's some good stuff in that book. Um, you wrote God and money. Make sure you get it. Some good stuff in there. Work those treatments. <laughs> Y'all think I don't work? I work that stuff. I can read that stuff. I'm like, that's some good stuff in there. And so how many of you got some books you got that you don't? Listen, and when you're really a truth student, let me just tell you how we are. We are peculiar people. We'll rather buy you a book than give you up, give up our book. Anybody in here like that? I will buy you what you, I'll buy you all the books you want, but I cannot give you my book. Not the book when you see we, all these post-its and Pages folded. I know that's not the most respectful way to treat the books. And I got all my yellow highlights and my pink highlights, my green highlights. I got notes and messages and I got dates. And uh, Y'all think I'm playing, don't you? Look right here. You see this right here? This, this thing, listen, it, it fell apart and I've had to, had to bind it up again and it fell apart. And, but you know what? It works. Say, it still works. The word still The word still works. The word of truth. So this is one of my favorite books, Your Needs Met. And this is by uh, Your Needs Met, The Healing Nature of Spiritual Mind Treatment. And this is important for those of you who are new to it. You see, we don't call ourselves a church here. This space and place is what? What do we, Hillside is what? A spiritual community. So you're not, you don't come here to come to church. You come in here as the church. Got it? You are the church. Say, I am the church. Come on. If you don't get anything else, get this today. And so when you hear people saying that they are fed up with the church, they are fed up with themselves. Well, you understand the church is not religious dogma. It's not traditions. It's not the word of old men and women who, have, who put forth some information. That's not the church. Paul says, know you not that your body is the temple. You're the temple. You are the church of the living God. And in your temple, the train of God's glory should fill your temple from the top to bottom, inside and out. So you don't come to Hillside to come to church. You come to Hillside as the church. And when you come as the church and the church gets together on one accord, we can have a whole mighty good time up in here. So this is a spiritual center. And not just a spiritual center. It's a spiritual what? Truth center. 
I don't care about all of the lies that we've been told. Don't, don't bring me what, any, what, what you don't learn from any other institution about the lie they done fed you. Come up in here to learn the truth. Amen. It is the truth about yourself. Amen. Whether you like the truth or not, the truth is a double-edged sword. It will draw you and it will drive you. It will cut you and it will protect you. Amen. And the truth is you are God, 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 God. Always have been, always will be, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And it's time to start acting like who you are and stop pretending to be who you are not. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Now, what's your truth? Say it. You didn't say it like you believe it. You're ashamed of it. You're scared for people to know the truth about you. If you're not ashamed of the gospel of truth of who you are, stand on your feet, lift your hands, and shout it out to the universe. I know I. I know I. Say it. I know I am God. I know I am God. Say it. I know I am God. I know I am God. I am the temple. My life is the temple. My body is the temple. Say it. My body. Come on. I want you to minister to somebody right now. Get a hold of them. Say, your body. I want you to get all of your spiritual, cultural sense. Your body is the temple. Tell them. Your body is the temple. Tell somebody. It's the temple of the living God. You are God. You are God. You are God. Hey, start acting like who you are. Start being who you really are. And if people can't handle it, so what? Who cares? Fooey on them. If people don't like it, so what? You've been catching hell this all this time trying to be who you are not. And what you, you're living beneath your true identity. Be who you are. So in this spiritual truth center, that's what we're about. So I don't care what they're doing down the street. I don't care what they're teaching down the street. I'm not interested in what's down the street. I'm interested in what's happening up in here. Yeah. Jesus says, this truth, say this one, this truth. is the truth that will set you free. From every sickness, every disease, every illness, every situation, every circumstance, every condition, all the bunkers and conquers of life, this truth will set your soul free. And when the soul is free, you're free indeed. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. High five somebody say, I'm glad you know who you are. I'm in good company today. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. I'm in good company today. If you didn't know, it's time to start knowing. Get this book. And then go with me to this passage. The words of Paul who represents the word of spiritual truth. Found in his writings to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and then we're going to look at verse 19. Remember, our subject is the remedy for every need. There is a remedy, there is a remedy, there is a cure for every need. There is a cure for every condition. There is a clear cure for every situation. So never feel that there is no cure, that you're hopeless and helpless. There is a remedy, shout it, there is a remedy. A remedy for every need. And if Paul says it right here, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who 
strengthens me. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. And verse 19 is the verse I want you to make sure you etch. Is it etch it? On the scroll of your soul that says, And my God will supply all, all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah again. Here is the reading, the remedy for every need. I want to begin by three more questions. Where do you go when you need help in life? Who do you turn to? When you're up against something and you're faced with something that you feel is more than you can handle, what do you do? When you are in great need, where do you go? Who do you turn to? What do you do? Family, I want you to know if there is a great need in your life today, please give ear to what's about to come forth. I truly believe in my soul that it's a relevant word for such a time as this. You see, each of us experiences moments in life where we feel overwhelmed, struggling with challenges that seem too much or too great to bear. How many of you have had those experiences? You know, have you ever had it? How many has ever had that experience? I'm curious. Is there anybody who's having a similar experience right now? Okay. Life is often filled with what appears to be great needs. Whether it's a need to be healed of an illness. A need for financial assistance and supply. We get calls all the time and want to pause and say thank you to those who are supporting our I Help Fund. Will you give yourselves a hand? It's that I Help Fund that's helped so many people who've been in needs from paying mortgages to rents to hospital, medical bills, whatever, the support, keeping lights on. And thank you. Give Reverend Gertrude Moore a big hand. She's our coordinator. We're overseeing them. Whether it's a need to attract the right mate or companion or a way out of an unhealthy situation, a great need, a need to secure steady employment. Or if you're an employer, maybe there's a need to secure steady, dependable workers. Maybe there's a need for housing today. Maybe there is an emotional and or a mental need. Usually the things that we feel that we need most, friends, indicate a greater spiritual need. Remember, we live from the inside out. That's how we're supposed to live, but most people live from the outside in. So when we find ourselves faced with a need outside of ourselves, it indicates a greater spiritual need. Come on, put your hand on your heart. It's a greater spiritual need in and for our lives. And this is so on an individual and collective level. And right now, so whatever that need is, whatever the great need, you don't even have to voice it to anybody. And that's good news because the Spirit already knows. Isn't that good? The Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. And there's a passage that says in Isaiah chapter 65, before you even thought to ask, I've already answered. And while you're yet speaking, I've already heard you. So right now, it appears that our nation is in great need. Our world is in great need. Humanity is struggling with a great need. And we are in a time, as it's been stated, that so many people are dealing with issues and challenges that they've never had to face before. I recently saw, uh, I read about an article of um, um, a, a lady in Chicago. She's retired. She's taught school for many years. And she's 70, I think 76, 77 years young now. And she gave her time. She served, she retired. And because of the rising housing costs, she's unable to live on her retirement. So she's now being forced to go back and get a second, to get a, to get a job. 
And she never thought in her mind that that would be her experience. So there are people today facing stuff that they never had to face before. There are individuals who are having to now care for loved ones, whether it's a parent or a child. There are grandparents who are having to care for their grandchildren or great, uh, great grandparents. And maybe at this time in your life, you thought that I've raised mine. You know, I can have them to come and go and bless them as they go, right? But now there's the great need in our nation, in our world. So people today are looking to and, uh, and for some sense of hope and assurance and confidence that things will be better and get better. There's a great need in our world today. I want you to define this. Let's define what a need is. A need is defined as circumstances in which something is necessary or that require some course of action. A condition or situation which something must be supplied in order for a certain condition to be maintained or desired state to be achieved. I want you to grab hold of this definition of need. A need in this context called hillside is an opportunity to see and experience the wonder-working power of God. So when we face a need, we're actually facing our opportunity. We're facing a great need. It's our great opportunity to see and experience the wonder-working power of God in us. Your greatest need, friends, is your greatest opportunity to see God in you at work. Let's make it personal. My greatest need is my greatest opportunity to see God in me at work. Now I want you to encourage somebody around you. Tell them, so your greatest need is your greatest opportunity to see God at work in you. Come on, tell somebody else. Tell them your greatest In fact, y'all want you to point somebody. Just point out somebody. Point at somebody and say, your greatest need is your greatest opportunity to see God at work in you. Somebody needs to get this today. Let's say our greatest need is our greatest opportunity to see God at work in us. Do you have a need today in your life? This is the greatest need. So begin to see it as your opportunity to witness God work a miracle of supply in your situation. For this time has it come, and it came to you. Your situation is your opportunity to see it. Use the faculty of your mind. Reverend Ike would say, go into the theater of your mind. Look upon the stage of your imagination and see God working this miracle of supply in your situation. See God. See God. See the universe working this. See the universe working this miracle of supply. A miracle of supply. A miracle of supply is, is, is suggesting that you're not even expecting this. This is something beyond the, the natural. It's, it's supernatural. It's beyond anything that you can cook up or fathom in your own mind. Your conscious mind cannot cook this up. It's a miracle of supply. That means it's unexpected, unexpected good, unexpected blessing. And God uses unexpected channels to bring forth this miracle of supply to meet the need in your life. See God. I see God. I see God working it out for me. Oh, hallelujah. Huh? Your greatest need. Say it. My greatest need is my opportunity to see God work a miracle of supply in my life. Somebody shout, work it out, God. Work it out, God. Work it out. So if you have a need today or if you're working on demonstrating, if you're moving from drama to demonstration, if you're moving from mess to manifestation, 
Make sure you get this because this is the remedy for every need, my friends. And when you go to God, you're going to get just what you wanted. I'm willing, when you go to the, when you go to truth, not God outside of you, when you bow to the God inside, because it's the same God of all. Say, Spirit, you guide. I'm going to sit down for a minute. I'm going to sit down my intellectual, reasoning, rational mind. I'm going to sit down my monkey mind. That's always feeding my feeding me with all this negativity and all of the negative nonsense of this world and what I can't do and what I can't have and what I can't where I cannot go and what I cannot manifest. I'm gonna sit that mind down in spirit. I'm gonna let you lead it. You teach me, you guide me, you speak. I'm listening, spirit. I know you got the answer. You are the answer, you are the remedy, you are the cure. To every condition, I know, Spirit, you got it. If, the, if it is to be had in this universe, your Spirit got it. You ain't without it. Say, I'm not without it. My supply is right where I am. Johnny Coleman says, there is nothing to be healed, only God to be revealed. There's nothing in our lives to be healed, only the truth to be revealed. And it says when God is truly revealed and truth is revealed to every cell of our being, everything will rise up and meet and greet and stand in alignment with this truth. Say, reveal yourself, God. I told you, it's like one of the reverends, she went to her bank account and, she, and her account didn't show that God it was in that, that account. See, that God was red in that account. She said, uh-uh, that's not God's color. <laughs> not for this account. And she quickly shut off that computer, and she said, reveal yourself, God. <laughs> and she went back a few days later, and God had revealed God's self. And her account went from red to black and then to green. <laughs> Somebody ought to shout it out right now. Lift up the purse, your pocketbook, and said, reveal yourself, God. You got to learn how to pray this prayer. Don't go asking, begging, and beseeching, oh, God, please, please send me some money. Please pay my bills. You know my rent's due and money's not in me. Please, Lord. Uh-uh. Say it, deacon. Uh-uh. You got to pray the right prayer. Say, reveal yourself, God. In every form. This is what I do. I'm in the habit of walking by. Thank you, Bishop Ebenard Jordan. When I'm driving, so I get to ride a lot these days. Hallelujah. When I'm passing by financial institutions of any, any label, any form, I grab hold of this word. I am coin and currency of every realm. Whether I'm in this country, any other country, I am coin and currency of every realm. I am the dollars as the pesos and the dineros and the CDs and the, uh, uh, the, the whatever they are. I'm coin and currency of every realm. My time is really getting away. I ain't even told you what I want to tell you yet. God is meeting you right now at your point of need. Paul gives this word when he himself was in great need in prison. The word of truth imprisoned in Rome is the Rome within ourselves. It's the word of spiritual truth that's often imprisoned by our intellect and our reasoning, rationalizing mind that cannot see any further than what our senses can, or any further than where our senses can take us. I can't see beyond what I can see with my physical eyes. I cannot believe beyond what I can hear with my physical ears. I cannot believe beyond what I can touch and for myself. That's your Rome that imprisons the word of truth. And then Paul gives these instructions. He makes it clear in this affirmation. I can do all things. Nurture that. Take up that affirmation, that scripture in your mind and heart. Begin to say it over and over. When you feel helpless and hopeless, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then this next, that next one is, that's the very reason any of you go and get those I done told you. 
those uh, shoes that we got, those blessing shoes, it has that scripture, Philippians 4, 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches. So I want to give you these three things as you're working with the remedy for every need. The very first thing I want to remind you to do is make sure that you see God as source. Go to God first. Before you go to any other institution, before you call anyone else, pause within yourself. God is source. Say that God is source. Say God is my source. That means it's all whatever you need. It's in God. It's, it is all in God. God is the source of everything that we need or think that we need. And in our teachings of metaphysics, God means or is the presence of unlimited good that is, in every, that is everywhere and in everyone. So God, the presence of unlimited good, is source. Say, affirm it with me. God is the presence of unlimited good in me and in everyone. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is to remember that God can handle it, whatever it is. There is nothing, there is no need that the presence of God cannot supply. Whatever it is, God can handle it and God can supply it. So get busy in your own mind working the real work. So if there's anything that's standing in opposition of that truth, our work is to remove the blockage. Remember, A Course in Miracles says miracles are natural when you remove those things that are blocking the flow. That's why I love going to see, and I haven't been to see. I'm coming to see. Come on, stand up, chiropractor. Our chiro come on. Uh, the chiro uh, uh, Our doctor here. I need to go. What do y'all? Come on down right quick. I'm giving you a plug. Come on. No, you don't go when you go to, to see your chiropractor. I know there are other chiropractors in here. That he has a he has a touch. And what's the whole purpose of adjustments? Why do you adjust so they can do it? So we adjust to make the nervous system operate as close to 100 percent as possible. The nervous system, the central nervous system, is the basis of all our lives. All your systems, hormone, immune respiratory, reproductive, doesn't matter. It's the first system, the central nervous system, the first system to develop at the conception. It's the last system to develop or leave when we die. If you want to be fine, take care of your spine. So we got it. So, so you adjust to remove yeah. the blockage so the what can flow. So we, we move the blockage so that God can flow. The chi, all of the chakras, right? All the meridian lines. If you have a blocked inter, uh, nervous system, not, you will never be able to receive fully anything, whether it be uh, massage, any kind of natural, anything that you're trying to do. It doesn't matter. If you have a blocked nervous system, it will not work fully. When you remove the block. When you remove the block, God flows. Hey, come on, give him a hand. What's the name of your... So we are Align for Life. I am Dr. Fowler. Uh, my business partner, Dr. Williams, we are co-founders of Align for Life. We're located right over in uh, Lakewood at the Ali uh, Center. Uh, actually, uh, the... Uh, centers that we're on the top floor. It is the Kendrick Healing Center is what we're inside of. And again, even though I say you want to be fine, but what we also say is auto accident, wellness care, slip and fall. We take care of it all. <laughs> and we're working on getting them up in here in our wellness center, the Hillside Hill Wellness. All right, so now listen, I didn't, I, I didn't know I was going to give you that plug. Now you know to bring your tithe up in the storehouse, right, Doc? <laughs> That's your plug. Now listen, so God, remember, God is the source. God can handle it. And once you know that, friends, begin to act like you got it. I want to act like you got it. Act like you've already got the answer and the cure. And I want to give, leave you with this story. And then uh, we're going to close out. We're going to do prayer. It's in my heart that we do prayer today. And I might have shared this with you before. And if I have, please forgive me. It's not that, you know, you pre I, I don't know how many messages I've preached over the years. And sometimes we repeat ourselves. But a few years ago, I was called upon to to visit Dominican Republic after doing some mission work in Dominican Republic in Haiti. And there was a couple, a delightful couple, Mary, Mother Mary, who was of Haitian descent and her husband, and they had a mission house. And they were doing work with Haitian immigrants in DR. And she says, Jack, can you come over? Can you help? We need some help. And so we partnered with Boston University, and they sent a team of doctors, med students, and ophthalmologists, and optometrists, 
and they went in to do clinics. And we had this big meeting, right? And we had, we done put the word out that we're coming, we're bringing help to the community. We're bringing, we're, we're bringing some assistance to the community. And sure enough, the first day I'm there and we get to the mission house, I tell you, you see, there are people with needs everywhere. And when you know that there's some place you can get some help, we're going to go to where we can find help, right? The first day we get there and there, the line was, before we even opened, hours before we opened the doors, the line had already wrapped around the, the facility. Hundreds of people in line. And I said, oh, God, you're doing a mighty work today. We go through that day. At the end of the day, we get a call from the workers. And they said, Mother Mary, at that time they called me Pastor Jack. We are out of supplies. I said, you can't be out of supplies. This is the first day. We're going five days. And said, no, we couldn't even service all of the people who kept coming. They kept coming. And they said, we got, we're out of supplies. And I'm like, well, Mother Mary says, oh, what are we going to do, Pastor? What are we going to do? Well, you know, I did what I know to do. I know one thing that works. I know I could pray. And so I said, well, let's, let's pray. But first I said, well, well, what do we need? Where can we get supplies? They said, well, there is a place, a warehouse that has supplies, but we need this amount of money. I said, well, I got some money. I said, how much do we need? And they told me what we needed. And I counted what I had on me. I said, well, um, uh, uh, let's see. Is there any other? <laughs> they give discounts? <laughs> and so I said, well, don't worry. I said, let me get to a bank. And I go to an ATM. I said, they're in the ATM. Yeah, we can get you an ATM. And I, here I am. I'm thinking, I'm going to work this thing out, right? I'm going to work it out. I got, I got some money in my pocket. I know I got something in my account. So I go to my eight, this ATM, and I, I didn't alert my bank that I was traveling out of country. And I go to the bank ATM, and it rejected my card. I said, I said, oh, yeah, I didn't think nothing about it because I said it must be an, I must have put the code in wrong. And I go to put the card in it again, and and you see, well, you know, you ain't got no money, and there ain't no nigga pretending. But I knew I had some money in my account, and that's why I went to the bank. But I went to that ATM boldly, come give me what I know I got. And so, and I put it in there again, Dr. D, and it rejected it. It rejected it again. Now I'm feeling some kind of way because I'm working this thing out, you know, and the Mother Mary and her husband, they there, and they need some, they need some medical supplies. And I, God, you don't send me for such a time as this. I know I got some money. In my, I tried it a third time. I said, no, let me go inside the bank. I went inside the bank. I wanted to meet with somebody. And I said, well, here's my, let me put my card in again. And I put my card in. And they said, sir, it's been rejected. I said, what you mean rejected? They said, well, did you tell your bank that you're traveling? I said, no. I said, but what about American Express? They said, well, we don't, they don't take American Express. And here we are. At the end of the day, no money. The people hurting and in pain, people who cannot get medical assistance, traveled from far. Because they heard that help was available. And so we got together and we prayed. And we did our prayer, but I went up. I said, let me go. Sometimes you got to steal away. You know, it's all right. I can pray with people. But I needed to steal away. Reverend Constance Mohorn Taylor said, you can hear the Spirit's voice when you get still and listen. And so I went up to my room and I said, and I got in my prayer time, in my closet. I said, God, what's, I know you're the answer. I know you're the answer. I know you're the answer. You have the answer. You didn't bring us here. You didn't bring all these people here. You didn't bring all these med students here for us to turn these people away. They're coming by the hundreds. You put the call out and they're coming. And I kept hearing, look up, Jack. Look up, Jack. I said, look up. And I'm looking up in the room. I'm like, is there a pocket in here somewhere that got an envelope stash? I said, look up, Jack. Look up. And I'm looking up. I'm, I'm looking up, Spirit. I'm looking up, God. What am I supposed to see? And then I heard that whisper says, lift up your eyes. And I was reminded of this passage that Reverend 
Ollie B. Browning would affirm every Sunday at Williams Grove Missionary Baptist Church, every Sunday. And he would tell the people, if you get a hold of this, you will ignite and evoke supply wherever you are. And I heard that whisper, lift up your eyes, Jack. And I said, oh, I get it. I get it. And I ran right away to Psalm 121. And it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And God will not let your foot slip. God who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, God who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. For the Lord watches over you, and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm, and God will watch over your life. For the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. And I got it. And then Spirit start revealing some names to call. And I called the executive director of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. And I said, doctor, whatever his name was, he was from Dominica. I said, this is our situation. We need some help. Do you have any connections? And he got on the phone, and he started calling, and he got a hold of a lady who got a hold of, at that time, Obama was president, and she got a hold of the Obama administration. And then the Obama administration called USDA and Dominican Republic. And then we got a call right there. It says, listen, if you got... A vehicle big enough to come and get you some supplies, you can get all that you need. So by that next morning, huh? By the next morning, before the sun had even started coming out, we were always already making our way. We done got some U-Haul truck, whatever trucks we had to go pick up all the supplies. So friends, I just want you to know if you have a need today, lift up your eyes. Come on, lift up, stand if you're able. Who has a need? Who has a great need? If you have, I want you to come and let us, come and let us pray. Come on, come on, bring, bring your needs to the altar. Come on, come on. For the Lord is the keeper. The Lord is thy shade at the right hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which just be you. You don't, you don't have to hold hands. You just let yourself be. God said she would not suffer thy foot, foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, God will not slumber nor sleep. Oh. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. God shall preserve thy soul. Even forevermore. Lift up your hands and say it with me. My help. Come on, come on. Oh, my help. Say it. Oh, my help. My help. All of my help cometh from the Lord. I want you to lift up your eyes right now and lift up your vision right there. If you came here for prayer, I want you to lift up and see God. Come on, lift up. Your, if you have to close your eyes, close it. See God. See God. See God working and releasing the miracle of supply in your life right now. See God. Jesus says you can have what you can. If you believe it, if you can believe, if you can only believe all things are possible for those who believe. See it. Condition your eyes to see right now. I see God working. Say it with me. I see God. I see God. I see God working. If you have to close everything out around you, I see you working it out, God. I see you meeting my need, my greatest need. 
It is my greatest opportunity to see you work this miracle of supply in my life. And I'm giving thanks for it right now in advance. I'm giving thanks. My faith says thank you. That's faith. Faith says I can give thanks. You got to have it. You got to get it before you can have it. Get it in your mind and heart. What is the need today? Huh? What is your need? God has already provided. It's already yours. You have the responsibility of claiming that. Claim it. I give thanks for what you have already promised me. I give thanks for meeting my, me at my point of need. I can't give it to you. But I promise you, if you begin to open your mouths, use the power of your Philip, your spoken word, and release that vibration into the universe, you magnetize yourself for what it is that you think that you need. And so you have to, and this is what Spirit says, lift up your eyes so you can see beyond the need to the supply. Don't stop at the need, see the supply. See if you can see the supply, you've just brought the supply in reach. The universe has come to meet you inside of you right where you are. Can you see it today? Can you see what's possible? Can you see? Don't just see it. Can you see yourself with it? Huh? Can you see yourself with whatever the remedy and the cure is? Can you see yourself with the answer? Can you see yourself having the breakthrough? Can you see yourself with the good that your soul is desiring? Can you see, if you cannot see yourself with it, work with yourself until you can see it. Because when you can see God in you manifesting the good, it's not that it's going to come, it's already here. And all we got to do is remove the scales from our eyes so we can then see it. And then we can begin to release our praise and gratitude in the atmosphere for it, knowing that it's already ours for the asking and for the having and for the naming and the claiming right here and right now. Thank you, God. My healing is now. Thank you, God. My breakthrough is right now. Thank you, God. My bank account is overflowing with money right now. Thank you, God, for the answer right now. Thank you, God, for the miracle right now. Thank you, God, for making a way right now. Thank you, God, for aligning people and places and organizations and putting them in alignment right now. Thank you, God, is happening in me, through me, to me, as me for me right now right now God is a right now God right now say it right now right now it's happening right now say it it's happening in me right now say it it's happening in my life right now God is working it in me right now God is working it out right now say it God is healing me right now God is delivering me right now God is prospering me right now God is making a way right now. It's a right now, a right now, right now. Get in the nowness of consciousness. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Huh? So act like you would act if you already had it. Huh? Act like you would act if it was already done. Right now, right now, right now. Say it right now. Right now. God is doing it right now, right now, right now. Right now, 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 right now. God is doing it right now, not tomorrow, not next year, not next month, not what the doctor said, right now. Right now, 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 right now. Lift up your hands and give thanks to them. Lift your voice, lift your heart, lift your mind, lift your soul, lift your vision. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now, God, right now, God, right now, right now, right now, in the nowness of consciousness, God is doing it right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Right now, right now, right now, right now, God, right now, right now, right now. Cometh from the Help. 
help. All of my help. All of my help. All of my help. All of my help. All I need. God has already provided me. All my help. All my help. Right now, God. From the Lift up thy eyes unto the hills. All of my help come back from. Oh, lift up your hands. Come on. Come on. All over this atmosphere, all over this chapel. Online, you lift your hands. God in you wants to do it. Give God permission to work the miracle of supply in your life. So I give you permission, God. Give God permission to work the miracle of supply in your business, in your family, with your children. Come on, give God permission. Give God permission. Give God permission. Give God permission in the balcony. Give God permission. Choir, give God permission to work the miracle of supply in your life. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Will you release your gratitude in the atmosphere today? Huh? Will you release your praise in that? Will you seal the deal with your praise? I want you to touch and agree with somebody. Come on, get a hold of one person. Get one person. Get one person. Get one. I want you to just come into agreement. Say, I'm celebrating. I'm giving thanks that God is working it out in your life. Come on, tell them. I'm giving thanks that God is working it out. God has already worked it out in life. Tell somebody I'm giving thanks that God has worked this miracle of supply in your life. Right? Hey! Right now, right now, right now, right now. In the nowness of consciousness, it's already done. We name it so. And so, all of my help. Oh, my help. My help. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 